guys, we're back. And in this video, I want to talk about what to do when you've already blown your diet. All right, so we're in that holiday season. And in the last video, we kind of talked about strategies of how to prepare for different meals with family, for the holiday experience. But what happens when everything goes to shit and you've already eaten about 8,000 calories in one meal and you're wondering what to do? I have a few different strategies for this. Uh, ideally, we wouldn't put ourselves in this situation to begin with. We'd watch our, our first video where we were talking about how to manage this. But if we're in this position, uh, how to manage it. So the first thing I, that I, I kind of ask my clients when I, when I work with them is, okay, was this kind of an emotionally driven binge stress response, you know, where it just you were just kind of the, the function of a bunch of different stresses boiling over. As much as we'd like to think the holidays are all sunshine and rainbows, for most people they're more stressful than the other times of year because you're thrown out of your routine. So if it was kind of a stress response, you know, binge issue, uh, I would say just get kind of back into your normal routine, right? So, so start back up the next day, act like nothing happened. You know, you probably will gain some weight, but just get back doing what you normally do uh, and just try to be consistent with it. Now, if it's an issue of you just kind of decided that you were just going to overeat and you deal with the consequences later, that's fine. Um, in that case, what I would, what you could do is, let's say you overate uh, by 2,000 calories on one day. Well, you've got six days left in the week. Uh, you could distribute that 2,000 calories over those six days. Or let's just, for easy math, let's just say you distribute over five days. You could subtract 400 calories from five other days of the week. Or you could subtract 500 calories from four other days of the week. Or, you know, you could do it any number of ways, right? But you're just trying to get that number kind of back to zero, right? And is it perfect? No, but it's going to get you closer to being at a net zero and being able to either, you know, maintain your weight or continue your weight loss if weight loss was your goal or not get so damn fat when you're bulking, right? <laughs> Tis the season to be bulking, as many people say. If, if you're going to be in a surplus, now's the time. But for those poor, unfortunate souls who decide to torture themselves by dieting through the holidays, um, strategies need to be in place. Now, again, I think it's a really bad idea to try and diet through the holidays, unless you have a show coming up. I think most, I've worked with over a thousand clients over the course of my career, actually it's probably closer to 1,500. And the number of people who have been successful dieting through the holidays Without having a show to keep them accountable, I can count on one hand, okay? Now, maybe you're different. Maybe you're tougher than everybody else, but I think you're setting yourself up for failure if you're doing this. I would suggest either maybe you're running a reverse diet or you're just trying to do maintenance or you're doing some kind of muscle gain phase where you're in a caloric surplus. Um, you know, you, you have... You need to spend that time in a caloric surplus anyway, and so what better time of year to do it than when there's food are plentiful, right? But if you've already blown it, you know, keep in mind there's nothing you can do to fix what's already happened, right? Like you can't go back and change what happened. Um, so all you can do is figure out what you're gonna do moving forward. Now, if this ends up being a pattern of behavior where every week you, you have another event and you end up having a blowout, maybe it's time to try to come up with strategies not to put yourself in that position. I'm not saying don't have a dinner with family or anything like that, but Maybe you're giving yourself more macros. We talked about in our last video. You're, you're saving up more macros for that meal. Or you're saying to them, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just having um, you know, XYZ dishes. Or you bring your own dish to the, to the party or, or get together or whatever it is. So have those strategies. But once it's happened, um, I think you're basically left with the two choices that I talked about. Either you can say, well, I'm, I'm just going to... Cross off the list, it happened, I'm gonna get right back on what I was doing and try to move forward. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. In fact, that's what I usually prefer for most people because most people I find don't overeat because they're hungry. They overeat because of stress and they overeat because of things that go on in their lives. Um, and I think that that, rather than getting this into this, I was stressed out and I overate so I'm gonna punish myself and eat less these next few days, which is going to make me hungrier. 
and more stressed and more likely to do the same damn thing I already just did. Let's just get back on what they were doing before, try to push forward, and you know what? It was just one day. Like, yeah, you might gain a little bit of fat from it, but it's just one day. It, one day doesn't ruin your lifting career. One day doesn't ruin your powerlifting career. One day doesn't ruin your bodybuilding career. One day doesn't ruin your bikini career, whatever it is, right? Or one day not going to make you obese, okay? So is it, can it be annoying? Yes, but learn to forgive yourself and move on from it. Uh, if you're constantly beating yourself up for things that have already happened, you be beating yourself up your whole life. So obviously try to work on strategies to avoid it in the future. And once it has happened, try to have a short memory. They talk about this in the NFL with quarterbacks. Try to have a short memory, right? They talk about quarterback goes out, tosses a terrible interception, comes right back out, marches his team right back down the field, throws a game-winning touchdown pass, right? That's somebody they have called, that's called having a short memory because if he just let himself stew on the interception he just threw, there's no way he can get himself riled up enough or confident enough to take his team right back down the field and throw that game-winning touchdown. So same thing for you. If you're just going to stew on the fact that you screwed up your diet, you overate, all this kind of stuff, there's no way you're going to be able to get yourself in the uh, state of mind to get back on whatever your nutritional strategy is, be consistent with it, and make it work. Because you're going to be so hung up on what you already did wrong. So learn to forgive yourself pretty quickly and just move on and get back right back on that grind, okay? Consistency is way more important than perfection. If you hold yourself to perfection, perfection standard, you're going to be disappointed because guess what? You ain't perfect. I ain't perfect. Nobody's perfect. But if you're consistent with your application of your nutritional strategy over time, the results will come. Consistency, perfection. Okay, so come up with a strategy that allows you to be consistent and having a screw up every now and then, it's not going to kill you. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Um, I am running a holiday special right now on the Make America Science shirts, 20% off now until Christmas. Not only can you show your support for science and your support for this channel, but you can also look pretty damn festive doing it because guess what? You can wear red to a holiday party, right? So go check out the shirts. Links in the description. Subscribe to my channel. Like the video. And I will catch you guys next time.